Hello and welcome. Great viewers all over the world, wherever you're watching me from, I thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I appreciate you wherever you're connecting from. If you're joining me from any part of the world, I say thank you very much for your contribution to the channel. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much. And remember, remember in this channel, we do not talk against people, neither do we preach hate speech, but we are bringing information to your doorstep. There are so many information that will elude us because we are too busy or because of one thing or the other. I make research to get these videos to bring it to your doorstep. You watch the video. After watching, you can go to the comment section and put down your comments. It is for educational purpose. It is for us to get informed. It is not to demonize anybody or to talk down on anybody, but to set the record straight. Because the conventional media most times cannot do everything for us. They can't say it the way we want it. We come on social media, we share these videos, then we go to the comment section and we share our views. Feel free to say it the way you feel it. Nobody's going to attack you. Nobody's going to come against you. Just express yourself. That is what we are doing on this channel. And we'll continue to bring news and information. More especially news about Nigeria, Africa and the world as well, in general. We bring it to your doorstep for you to know what is actually going on. If you stick to us, you will never be left behind. You will be updated and you will know what is going on. That is why we are here. Thank you so much for joining. Let us watch this video. Watch it patiently from beginning to the end. I will bet you, you will not regret your date. Let's watch. ...around politics 2023 is on. There is a big question of governance. And what's the essence of governance? It's security and welfare of the citizen at the simplest level. And you may have seen that story. Uh, about bandits, terrorists invading the Kaduna International Airport, killing one NAMA security official. Uh, it's, it's really mind-boggling to just think about that particular incident because that's perhaps an airport you have visited uh, in times past. So let's take a look at what this means, what we may have missed and how to forestall this, not just at that airport, but in other places that might be vulnerable. And to do that with us, we have Captain... Uh, Ali Omar, who is a former army officer and a CEO, Goldwater and River Sand. He joins us right here in our Lego studio. Captain, it's good to see you. I was saying earlier that, yes, it's good to see you, but most times when we see you, it's when we have these dire instances. And this latest one on the Kaduna International Airport. I remember in 2020, we were meant to take a trip, but we had to shelve it because there was something similar. And we had to take the rail. That's why a lot of people have moved to the rail. Last year, again, there was some abduction at the, you know, staff quarters of the airport. So this latest one, how would you read it? Is this an attempt to get publicity for the terrorist or just a reflection of the reality? Uh, good morning. Good morning. The situation as it happened, quite unfortunate, actually just opens it a bit more so we could be able to appreciate what is on ground and what needs to be done, what is happening, how it happens, and what needs to be done. We start with security, and we've all come to agree that security is everybody's business today. Everybody's business. And then we go back to that place where um, an attempted attack was made. And uh, one very brave personnel of the airport uh, authority there at the extreme end tried to raise alarm. Unfortunately, we lost him because he was killed. That evidently botched whatever they were trying to do. And uh, good enough, there is, a, there is a standby force which was commissioned recently, the 37 Demo Battalion. 37 Demo Battalion sits and is dedicated by the Nigerian army within the academy and its area of responsibility because of the resilience and the itinerant nature of security today includes that airport and the safety of people and equipments around that airport. Then we also have um, an Air Force group, an Air Force Special Forces deployment which also covers that place. And, uh, Good enough, they were able to respond, and uh, when they did respond, they were able to save the day and um, recovered two abandoned motorcycles that these uh, uh, bandits had used 
in their attempt to get through to that airport to do God knows what. Uh, the way I see it, um, there are pockets of areas of concern around that airport area, which is namely the Afaka forest area. And up, other than that Afaka forest area, there are up and out to Birningwari axis. You have a lot of places where these people are likely to sit in and come out from. I recall Afaka um, is infamous. We've had like a, a kidnapping incident in Afaka, quite infamous. But still talking about you know the airport, you, you said that there's a battalion. Yes, at indeed. the end. I imagine you're talking about the NDA. The yes, academy. the Nigerian Defense Academy. But, demo but the, battalion. the academy is about what 20 kilometers away from that airport, if I'm correct. Yes. So, I mean, imagine the time it will take for response. Even the Air Force Base is quite a distance from the airport. And uh, looking at the security architecture. I mean, airports usually are not within, except in rare cases, they're not usually within city centers. They need a lot of space mm -hmm. and land and all of that. Perhaps the distance, couldn't we have it maybe closer, the battalion, maybe domiciled in the airport, seeing that this place is seemingly exposed? Yes, indeed. That the, that the Air Force Base is actually on the Mando Axis, Kao Mando Axis, and um, the demo battalion is in the Nigerian Defense Academy. Does not mean that is their hub or that is their home base, okay? That's just the parent unit that accommodates their headquarters. Their operational area takes them out of that place and they deploy as security situation uh, warrant. What I think the challenge would be for now is, first and foremost, the Kaduna state government actually works hand in hand with the armed forces and the security agencies. They provide logistic support, they provide whatever, you know, support they can do to gather up and help drive the successes of this uh, deployment. But what I think, if you asked me, we need to do today is to first and foremost, adopt what I have always spoken about in the past. And permit me to use the word again, we need to up adopt a ruthless approach to this situation. We need to make the cost of banditry so high. Okay, let me just use me. See, if my mother's husband was a bandit, I'll take him out. I have no apologies. I don't want to sound like a humanist or a pacifist. Desperate injuries need a desperate cure. Regardless of rules of engagement. Let the rules the of engagement take the back seat. These are not people who respect no rules of engagement. Is it because they have been declared terrorists? Leave that. All of that bring in the politics the and the semantics and the verbiages of it all. What I'm trying to tell you is we have a rich history with these people, regardless what you call them of not respecting states. We've tried to give them a retirement plan with pensions. They don't respect it. I have seen soldiers pay with their lives. I have seen widows who are still mourning. Their husbands have not even been remunerated for properly. Bandits have retirement plans. Some are abroad training. Listen, what we have on ground is a situation where we must bear our fangs. See, Democracy has teeth, and democracy can bite, okay? So most of the time when we are working, we need to understand something. Anything that threatens our national security state of being, regardless what it is called, should be treated commensurately for what it is. These bandits, from what we know, are not even Nigerians. They are not. And they come in here, and what are they trying to do? They're trying to carve out a space for themselves, regardless what anybody thinks. Uh, my, my apologies. Is this, uh, we'll, we'll come to the ruthless part you know, first, because sometimes, but sometimes I like to trace why it's happening in the first place, what's the root cause. Uh, would you call this an economic, um, crime or it's just an ideological one what would you call this one 
we cannot even begin to define them. But let me try. If you say it's ideological, what ideology? There is none. Today they jump on ideology. Tomorrow when you're trying to solve the problem based on the ideologies they're preferring and bringing them in, they jump to religion. And the next thing they're telling you, no, it's not about religion. It's about forming their own caliphate. Then when you are talking about forming a caliphate, they really have nothing doing other than mischief. Okay. Again, um, so they attacked an airport. Why an airport? I mean, we could understand if it's kidnapping of children at schools for ransom. We could understand if it's on the roads and they're attacking people for ransom or for money or whatever. What is in an airport? for them to attack? Based on the intelligence gathered, I have been in contact with the commissioner for the Ministry of Internal Security and uh, Home, Homeland, uh, home, affairs. Home, ladder, home Affairs of Kaduna State. And they do have a very diverse and uh, grassroots deep intelligence acquisition mechanism among the populace, the locals around there. What really happened is there is this entitled sense of disruptiveness these bandits have. There was a disagreement between two chieftains, so-called chieftains of these bandits over cattle. And before you knew it, it was like within that area, they are going to cause mayhem so that those who have probably taken his cattle, his in-laws, should be able to know that even though his son-in-law is also another bandit shifting, he also matters. So what you see is a people who are so spoiled, they believe that if we are not reckoned with, then nothing happens. It doesn't have to be an airport. Once they are aggrieved, they just go anywhere and start wrecking damage start killing people. So the, 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 the entire Kaduna, in this case, you know that, you know what, we are here. And any time we cannot have our way, or any time we feel aggrieved, we can just go and plunder anywhere and destroy anything. Doesn't that sound, pardon me, like a simple way to just wish this away, saying uh, battle between two chieftains? They, they attacked an airport. That's I mean, what I'm saying. Anyone let could me, have been. Me I mean, you, airports have security. Let me, give you, let, me, security. let me give you an example of what I'm trying to tell you. As we speak, there are groups in Nigeria today that really have nothing doing other than mischief, because mischief has become a way of making money. Violence has become the new normal. And I'm trying to tell you that if we have to get this mentality out of our national space, then it's, we have passed that period of trying to be altruistic or politically correct, or we want to do the kinetics, or we want to do the rehabilitations, or we want to do all those things we have already proven have been tested and have failed. But then the kinetics have not always also done justice, it would seem. We've been fighting this battle since, what, 2009? Then we... Yes, I mean, it, it has tippered down in the, in the war zones, if I can use the term, some bizarre for us. But it, what it has only done is to decentralize security all over the place now so uh, today it's an airport tomorrow it's a school and you know stuff like that so perhaps the challenge is that we're missing certain conversations when we're missing certain perspectives we're losing certain sight of certain things you know soldiers such as yourself and you know superior soldiers uh, um, um, sorry senior soldiers uh, retired soldiers uh, military officers have said that uh, look we need to deal with certain social denials, social uh, things that people lack, social lacks that people have had over time. And that has also you know, been an issue. Just recently, uh, the, the president called for a conversation among, uh, with the governor of Imo State on something similar, uh, insecurity and all of that. So uh, it would seem like then that maybe they Boots and guns and bullets are not really doing the magic. So 
what are we missing? Because we can't continue like this. There will be no investments, no jobs, no creativity, no productivity. If these things continue, investors are not going to feel safe. Really, you have a point. We have already lost investors over time. People are running away. And that brings us back to what I'm trying to tell you. Until we actually pin it, we will keep going around in circles. So what's the point? That's what I'm saying, that you have to make one God-fearing example. You see, when you deal with this kind of people, you speak with a little voice, carry a big stick. You see, let me tell you something. I'm not, I'm not interested in sounding nice or politically correct now because the symmetries are growing. That's about the only gain size-wise we're seeing with victims, okay? If we have to stop this inferno, if I could call it, then the first thing we have to do is to show these people that, you know what? We can break necks, horns, and draw blood. We can, look, if we let our army on these people for 90 days, cock our ears and close our eyes, we're going to set them running out of our space. Let the world speak about all the human rights violations. It's okay, but we have to breathe. We have to leave. These people have us by the juggler and somebody is telling me of kinetics and somebody is telling, they don't know no kinetics. We are not dealing with, permit me to say, these people are not even human, they're animals. Apologies to animals. Because even animals don't behave like this. These are people that we need to get off the face of this planet, wherever they can be found. So in reality, I mean, in the real sense of it, so how then do you tell a soldier whom you have previously told to abandon rules of engagement and just go ahead, do whatever you want to do? How do you now tell them to now come back to that rule of engagement for another, perhaps a different uh, mission. And uh, what the question here is, I mean, how far is it far? How do you draw a line? Because that's what separates us from non-state actors. State actors, essentially, or the state, as it were. You have rules, you have a law, you have a constitution and all of that. So how do you draw the line? Because sometimes, I mean, you know about these things. You, you just throw caution to the wing and that's, they become rogue. Now you're talking about the soldier who you told to abandon the rules of engagement. No soldier ever abandons his rules of engagement. It's okay for you to see it from that perspective as a civilian, but I am telling you that a soldier is so resilient that he can actually adapt and readapt and readapt. It all depends on what he has to do. Let me give you an example. 20, 30 years back, demo battalions were not meant to be fighting battalions. Demo means demonstration. They were meant to aid training. The itinerant nature of our security challenges has turned demo battalions to fighting battalions. And that's why one is sitting down in NDA right now and covers that area. So what I'm talk talking about here is simple. A soldier's rule of engagement is about what? Keeping people alive. Keeping people alive means he has to put his own life at risk. In fact, death is life to a soldier. The art of dying for causes is life to a soldier. So if you want to look at it from the humanist, from the party pacifist, and all those angles, you have a point. But don't forget that the soldier you are using is also human. Anytime you drop one soldier dead, you've lost one life. Well, you know, and at what cost are we doing that? I, I know that the governor of Kaduna State has said this anyway. He said, go into the bushes and bombard them. Forget about all of these things, but it looks like there's some certain pushback, and you'll understand why, and I, I think that's a challenge you have as well. So perhaps you've sat in the same meetings with the governor, you, or you share that same perspective, understandably, but recall the Global Terrorism Index that was recently released. Indeed. Nigeria uh, well, performed better compared to what we had seen in, in previous times, but something quite remarkable or instructive about that report is that we've seen more attacks. Yes, we've seen fewer deaths, according to that report, but we've seen more attacks. So it would seem as though, yes, there are bombardments. I mean, they've called for simultaneous bombardments across all the northwestern states and even some other bordering states. Yes, we've seen that, but they are carrying, more, carrying out more attacks. So it would seem as though we're fighting this war on the one hand, seem to be winning it, but in terms of attacks, and who knows how brazen they will get that those attacks will now start leading to more deaths. So how are we having more attacks when it seems we're winning the war at the same time? We have more attacks, yes. 
We have less deaths, yes. Those are the stats. I've seen the last global terrorist, uh, GTI, Global Terrorist Index. And uh, indeed, the, the number of deaths reduced even though the attacks increased. That is true. What you should be looking at is this. Whatever the Global Terrorist Index says, is looking at it at what you could say a generic at a national level. I am isolating this place. I am looking at the people who are operating in that place. You will agree with me that they don't, um, they don't, they don't, they don't multiply like, I mean, it, 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 their, their numbers are not infinite. Their numbers are not infinite. And if you, if you understand what I say, their numbers are not infinite, you see that that is why they move in pockets. They move in pockets and try to create fear. So this one wasn't 300, as I said, or No, hundreds. there were about 100 bikes, so said, 100 bikes. They came out from, my guess should be from that Afaka axis. And before you knew it, their, their, their attempt to run into the runway there and do whatever was botched. Well, Captain, 100 bikes. Let's imagine two people at least, or three on each bike. Not, not in ungoverned spaces. Hold on. Have you been to that place? Oh, dear. Have you seen the landmass we're talking about? So how, I mean, it sounds simplistic, but don't we have aerial surveillance? And I think it's important to clear all this All of up. this. To notice these All moments. of this, all of this is key. There is an aerial surveillance uh, facility with um, Simon Arua. He has a control room where they bring in information. Okay, but when you sit and look at these things on paper, they tend to look quite little. On the ground, operationally, 100 bikes will be so insignificant spread out across this place. There is no law that said the bikes form a line and move. You could just see two, five, six bikes, and the next thing is they zero in and gather and the attack is on. What I'm trying to tell you is this. There is something they create in their pockets which we must turn around and use against them. And it's fear. The moment it hits the news that these people are operating, it gets, of course, news has to spread. Today with social media, news spreads in seconds. It creates that fear index that is so high. These little insignificant mites begin to look like some larger than life force. And what I am trying to tell you is that we can use that same fear index at, at, against them by putting the fear of our nation space in every single bandit whose mother is a woman like mine. Uh, 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 Captain, uh, just one last one here. Uh, there are those. Uh, they I are human see, beings. They I are not animals. They are not. They are not on ghosts. Twitter asking the question. Yes. Terrorists attack an international airport. I don't know if it's an international airport. No arrest. No CCTV footage. It's so sad that crimes are perpetrated and culprits walk away freely. Now, it sounds to me like you're saying uh, we've been on the defensive. Let's get on the offensive. That's it. How do we do that? Especially when we do not seem to have adequate um, uh, information, or what you call intelligence information, to know when and how this thing is going to happen. How do we do that? There are two things. As I said earlier, we must encourage our soldiers to do even more. And doing even more means Tell the soldiers what you want and get the hell out of their way. Sorry, I have to use these terms. And that is why probably people like me never lasted in the system. A soldier is a soldier is a soldier. It's either you want it or you don't want it. Don't call a soldier and say, you know what, go take that thing out. Then tomorrow you say, but you see, we don't think that way. When dialogue, diplomacy, rehabilitation, all of that has failed, that's when you call a soldier out 
and well, he's coming here to just clean it out. Well, we're glad we were able to call you a soldier out on this one, but <laughs> uh, Captain Omar, we have to wind down. It, it, it's always quite interesting speaking with you on these issues, but they are there, and I'm glad you've spoken to them. Uh, but so far, Captain Ali Umar, former Army officer, CEO of Goldwater and Riverside, it, it's been a pleasure as always speaking with you. Same here, same here. Thank you very much. Good morning. Well, some reactions coming. Uh, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have learned something from what you have just watched the video. Let us go to the comment section and put down our comments from what you have just watched. Let us try to make a sense out of every nonsense that we have seen and watched and had. Let us make a sense out of it. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much for joining. I will see you again next time. Remember us. Thank you.